So this is going to be a supplementary video to the A-level course. So this isn't the stuff that's on the specification. And it's just basically taking some of the stuff that is a step further so you can understand a bit more of the principles behind it. So we're going to have a look at atomic structure and I'm going to talk about the various models that you'll have come across and I'll show you how we extend that on to include some more physics in it. So the really nice simple GCSE model is you have an atom, so you've got a nucleus in the middle, you have a shell we call a shell 1 or quantum number 1, you have shell 2 which has quantum number 2 and you have shell 3 which has quantum number 3. And you'll have been told that each of these shells has a maximum number of electrons it can hold. So shell 1 can have 2, and then the next one can have 8. And I'm not even going to try and draw 18 on the next one. So, But that's the basic principle you've had. Now once you go into A-level chemistry, you start to know that these shells, in fact, are not made just made having 2, then 8, then 18 the bigger shells are actually broken down into orbitals and those actually correspond to the S and the P. So you've got an S which can only hold 2 and then a P which can hold 6. And then if you get onto D it can hold 10 and if you get onto F, 14. However, even that is a gross simplification of what is going on. So there's something called the Pauli exclusion principle, and what this says is that in an atom, no two electrons can have the same four electronic quantum numbers. So the first question is, what are those quantum numbers before we can start to use it? The first quantum number is the energy or shell energy or the quantum number. So, when we have shells in an atom, you have the first quantum number, you have the second sh shell and you have the third shell. Those are the quantum numbers. So the first shell has quantum number one, the second shell has quantum number two, and the third shell has quantum number three. Okay, so that's nice and simple. It just tells you where the electrons are shell-wise in just your basic GCSE shell terms. There's another pro property called angular momentum, which, given the symbol L, which basically gives you an indication of the shape of the orbital. So, the number L happens to be the quantum number minus 1. So if you want to know what the L number is, it's the N minus 1. And so what does L equals 0 look like if N equals 1? That's this one here. So this is just going to be purely your, if you're on your S orbital here. So you can get just two electrons into that if your quantum number is 1. Quantum number is 2, obviously L equals 1. So then you are allowed to have a p orbital as well as an s. And then if you get into bigger numbers, like uh, on to the third shell, you can have this d shape over here. Third quantum number is called the magnetic one, which gives you an indication of which orbital things are occupying. So if we look here, we've got a diagram of the p orbitals and the various locations they can occupy. And what we do is we give these notation, so we give this one 0, we give this one minus 1, this plus 1. So for each of those different ones, they have a different quantum number, so you've created a different state in which you can keep electrons. And if there are 5, it goes minus 2, minus 1, 0, plus 1, 2, like that. So it's always symmetrical about 0 for the magnetic numbers. Okay, and those shapes there are dictated by which particular type you're looking at. So those ones in that diagram is a P. And the fourth quantum number you need to know about is spin. So this is why we get electrons in pairs, because you can have one with up spin and one with down spin, and they have obviously do not then have identical quantum numbers, so then they're not violating the Pauli exclusion principle. So we indicate spin by having either an up arrow or a down arrow just shown in this diagram here. So let's have a look at example to see how this plays out, because that's a lot of information. Okay, so we're going to have a look at a sodium atom. So looking at the nuclide notation, we've got 23 nucleons, 11 of which are protons. So let's think about that. If this is an atom, therefore that means there are 11 
electrons. So let's start filling these. Now, the basic rules of this are you have to fill the level 1 before you can move on to level 2, you have to fill level 2 before you can move on to level 3. There are, there's an exception which we'll come to later on, but I'll explain that as I get to it. So we need to get up to 11. So with the 1s, we're going to start off with an up one, then obviously we have to complete the 1 so we give it a down one as well, so we don't violate the Pauli exclusion principle. So we're moving on to the two. So in there we have space for eight, so that'll take us up to ten, so we're going to need a completely filled second shell. So we fill up the two S first of all, then we go on to a P, which is a, a next, another energy level. And a key thing to note is you always put one in each of the orbitals before you ever put a second in there. And that's because having one in each is actually a more stable state for that to be in. So that's what it will fill up first. And then you'll fill up all the ones with the opposite spin. So we're up to 10 electrons here. So we need one more. So we're going to go into the 3s one and have one electron in the outer shell, which you should not be surprised by being sodium. And obviously all these ones, further ones here are going to be empty. So that's a simpler example. Let's go for some more. So we've got bromine here. So we've got, obviously that means 35 electrons if we're talking about an atom. So I'm going to start off by filling up the these shells here. So we're up to four, seven, ten. So we're going to Easily, so we're what we up to? So we're up to 10, 12, 15, 18. Now, key thing to point out here is actually the 4s is going to fill before the 3d. So we're up to 20 there. This doesn't happen for all different types of atoms. Some will fill the 3D before the 4S. It does depend on an atom by atom basis, but bromine, it happens to first. So we're up to 20. So let's just again, all the, the orbitals get one before we start to fill it. Put a second one in each orbital. So we're up to 30, so then we need to draw a couple of boxes. So we've already got the 4s, so obviously we're going to get a 4p. Okay, so we need just two more. So it leaves one space in your shell, which should not come as a shock to you. Obviously, being in group 7 bromine, you should find there is this one space remaining. So, a couple of key things I want to remind you of in this. You fill 1 before you fill 2, you fill 2 before you fill 3. For S and P, sometimes 4S is going to come before 3D, sometimes it's going to come after. There's no hard and fast rule about this. It's something you need to go away and read about because it works on a case-by-case -case basis. And other thing is, you always put one in each of the different orbitals before you put a second in, because it's much more stable that way. Okay.